Because of the devastating impact of droughts, people have been trying to change the weather through various techniques, ranging from witchcraft, tribal dances, rain cannons, bigger rain cannons, mobile tree humidity trucks, explosive balloons, and various other strange contraptions. Coaxing rain out of clouds seems to be wishful thinking. Or is it? Uh, no, it uh, actually is um, something that came out of um, the 1940s, and uh, it actually works. On November 14, 1946, Bernard Vonnegut, brother of novelist Kurt Vonnegut, discovered that silver iodide can be used to precipitate rain. So, how does it work? Some clouds have um, large quantities of liquid water, but they don't make rain because the water in these drops isn't falling quickly enough and colliding with other droplets and producing uh, heavy rain. Silver iodide uh, actually teaches the droplets how to freeze and by teaching them how to freeze it sets off a chain reaction where uh, a droplet will encounter a silver iodide crystal and the structure of the crystal is exactly the same as the structure of crystal ice water and so it will instantaneously freeze and explode and those shards that come out of the droplet then hit other liquid water droplets and start a chain reaction and so the cloud glaciates and once it's got some ice in it, then that ice can actually rob water from the um, remaining droplets and the crystals can grow uh, and become collectors and those collectors then uh, produce sufficient rainfall. The process at the heart of cloud seeding is nucleation, which is the precipitation of bubbles of gas in a liquid or vapor particles condensing into droplets. This can also be seen when introducing Mentos candy to Diet Coke. The Mentos act as nuclei for the formation of carbon dioxide gas, similar to rain being coaxed out of the clouds by introducing silver iodide. The um, uh, silver iodide is extra nuclei for the crystal formation. And uh, there's, the whole atmosphere is really undersupplied with things that actually have the structure to serve as ice nuclei. And so artificially increasing that concentration uh, can make rain happen where otherwise nature just wouldn't provide the ice nuclei to really make it go. But how do you get the silver up to the clouds? You can uh, fly it in a plane or uh, shoot it up in a rocket, but uh, typically for the experiments and the programs that actually really work, you attach containers onto the wings of a plane that um, that actually disperse the silver iodide. It's not as simple as just having a drought and calling in the aircraft to break the drought because there's, without clouds, uh, none of this works, right? So instead, it's a bit indirect. You um, seed during the winter, increase snowfall, where otherwise it would have evicted off of the mountains and not be collected. And then you've got a, a large snowpack that can actually just feed rivers uh, and keep them running uh, for irrigation longer than they would have if you hadn't done the seeding. In a place like um, the Snowy River in Australia, they've had record droughts. And so if you can increase the snowpack by 10% uh, in a basin that covers thousands of um, hectares, then you're really, you know, you're providing enough water to, to maybe uh, make it possible for 50,000 extra households to, um, to make it through the summer, right? And so f for those situations, it actually looks like it's eco economically uh, rational to uh, increase the winter snowpack so that you can actually get storage uh, for the dry season. The use of silver iodide for cloud seeding is expanding rapidly. 24 countries have cloud seeding programs, which collectively consume 50,000 kilograms of silver iodide annually. We know dancing for rain doesn't work, but with silver iodide, modern science is giving us new possibilities for the future.